you know, I love these Kid Project road trips because nothing says the spirit of home-built aircraft more than building a 200 mile per hour speedster in your garage. And that's exactly what's behind me here. A pretty nicely put together so far RV10. Uh, it's a big milestone in this project. Time to power up a panel full of expensive avionics. Uh, let's talk to a pretty talented builder, Mark Welch. So we're at uh, kind of a critical stage in the uh, RV10 build. Uh, I've just finished most of the wiring for the instrument panel and we're about to fire it up today for the first time to see if um, uh, the CAN bus system works, the uh, interconnects between the G3X system uh, all works. Uh, we still don't have an engine yet, uh, but all the avionics and the, um, the lighting and so forth back from there has been installed and uh, we want to get that tested. So as far as the Garmin suite uh, that I installed, uh, I ended up going with uh, the three panel uh, G3X Touch uh, there uh, was a GSU 460s, um, and that's sort of the backbone of the whole uh, Garmin system. Uh, it, uh, I have a Mu uh, 500 autopilot. The um, I've got a, a 650XI navigator, um, the GMA 245 audio panel. Uh, there's a, a GTR 20 remote radio for the second comm. A 345R uh, transponder that's mounted remotely, and again the rest of the Garmin, their Stervos and uh, magnetometer and so forth like that. And of course, some of the stuff is you know remote mounted in the back, some of it's remote mounted in the panel and stuff. And I will show you uh, an image of how we ended up choosing locations for all these things. Uh, but basically, you get the basic uh, wiring harness and system from Stein uh, if you choose to do the full panel build and then you still have to run all these wires and terminate them and stuff for the various components. So this, this is the, um, the big day is to flip the switch and uh, see if it recognizes the CAN bus and uh, everything goes through. So as far as some of the uh, work that you have to do after you get some of this from Stein, if you chose to go that route, or if you're going to build from scratch, is routing of all this stuff. Um, and actually, in the design process with Stein, you actually talk about where some of these components would go, and they make sure they have cable run lengths and stuff that are appropriate for that. But you still have to come up with a layout of how you're going to mount these to the back panels and run all the wiring. The, you know, the wiring harnesses come. I chose to have everything hand laced. I feel that's a better solution than zip tie and um, adding all of the hand lacing to uh, to hold these things secure and wrapping uh, wire bundles with uh, tape and things to, so that you don't have any chafing issues and then also uh, from from an access in a, in a future um, access point is making sure that you have enough cable length and stuff so you can pull components out and stuff because the way I did it here is I actually um, did a full mock-up. I actually took the instrument panel on a bench and built a cardboard um, mount, um, cardboard mock-up of the entire cowling with all the support struts and the back panel and so forth. And then took the individual components and uh, laid them out as to where I thought they would go best and make sure that the loops were long enough and stuff so that there wouldn't be any, any strain relief. And that was a big help. The next step that I did is uh, I um, actually brought the uh, cowling out onto my bench here and installed all the components on the back panels and so forth before I actually put it in so I wouldn't have to crawl underneath and, and install these things later on. So when all that was done, I was able to just literally take the top half of the cowling and bring it over and drop it on with uh, the basic uh, uh, components installed in the, um, and the back frame to the instrument panel. And all that was left is to just plug the equipment in. Well, once I finish with the rest of the wiring, is just plug the equipment in and um, we're here today to test it. <laughs> Another thing you have to decide is do you go with uh, conventional uh, push-pull circuit breakers or they now have um, electronic circuit breaker systems. There's a, a VPX uh, is a vertical power systems produces a module and I decided to go with that along with their PPX which is their uh, replacement for your solenoids and stuff uh, firewall forward. And uh, those are terrific because it's another level of being able to um, plan, design, and, and put together uh, how you want this, uh, the, this um, uh, avionics system to interact with you. The, the VPX actually has Ethernet connection which allows you to program the individual circuits and switches and so forth, uh, which again in my case Stein helps with. 
Um, but I chose to go down that road because it seemed to me as it's a lot less panel area. You don't have to have a, a whole uh, complement of uh, push-pull circuit breakers there. But, of course, when you're adding as many little aftermarket goodies as I have, you still need more circuits. The, that system only comes with 10, which you can use for basically all your, your main components and so forth. But uh, I added things like heated seats. Uh, I put a bunch of overhead lighting in, as I say. I added uh, some USB connections, things like that. So in the end, uh, you end up using a lot more circuits than a system like that has. But in my case, uh, I was able to just organize those in uh, a few areas uh, on the panel so that we'd have ready access to them. So the first thing we'll do is we'll turn on the uh, ABI battery switch, uh, which allows us to work from a uh, backup battery uh, for a couple of the screens and some of the avionics. Uh, it's basically meant to, to get your engine monitoring uh, system up and running so that you can monitor your engine as you begin to start your... Uh... Okay. So actually, I've gone all the way through. So uh, basically, the uh, ABI masters come on, now the master switch. And it looks like things are coming to life. G5's up. Three screens are coming up. Navigator, autopilot, and the radio. And we seem to be off and running. Uh, so this is the uh, VPX configurator. Uh, it's a um, SP-based uh, program that you can use to interface with the module. And it's used to set up all your individual circuits. Audio panel uh, is part of the um, avionics group, so it's on switch three, which is the avionics switch. Uh, and uh, you just configure the item, configure which port it's in, and then um, which switch it works off of. So fortunately, a lot of this stuff was um, uh, preloaded by Stein and, and along with the um, VPX configurator, so I didn't have to go through all that initial programming. But now I'll go through and refine all those things uh, as the other components come online. You see a lot of number of things are X'd out because they either aren't connected up quite yet until I finish the build. Uh, but we'll get all those online. But for a, a first uh, panel up, uh, I'm pretty happy. Things seem to have uh, worked pretty well. Oh, another little item that I added, uh, the uh, G3X has a video input and uh, I'm having looked on a couple of um, YouTube videos, a lot of uh, tail dragger uh, experimental pilots will add a little small camera to the front uh, below the nose so that they can see the ground ahead of them because you can't really see. Uh, I've done kind of the same thing, but in the reverse, I've taken a, a backup camera and mounted it to the uh, tail cone so that I can look down below the plane because, of course, a, a low wing, you don't have good visibility below the aircraft. So uh, talking about uh, experimental aircraft and um, some of the reasons that you decide to do this is you have the ability to customize to whatever level you want. And um, you could probably say I, I got a little carried away on that side. Uh, things like uh, the overhead console by Aerosport allows you to uh, cut some knack events into the rear of the plane and it, it'll give you forced air up to some nozzles that come out above the head, which is uh, a nice airflow. But I took it a step beyond that and I actually added inline fans to the uh, overhead so that when you're on the tarmac and you're programming your navigator for your flight, you're not sweltering in the heat and stuff. So uh, but those are the kind of things that you can do with an experimental aircraft. Uh, the other thing I did is on the um, engine side, I um, went with the uh, PMAG system. Uh, I didn't go with a full electronic ignition, but I did go with a PMAG system so that uh, I have uh, literally, uh, you know, um, electronic uh, magnetos. Uh, the last thing was the oxygen system. Uh, here I am in, uh, you know, the... Uh, Northeast, uh, and it's not like we do a lot of mountain flying, but uh, I decided since I was carrying it this far on everything, and I do have a daughter that's out west, uh, I would add an oxygen system in as well. Uh, but of course, this aircraft has the capability of getting up to some of those elevations uh, for longer flights, so I decided to add the uh, mountain high uh, oxygen system. And again, another thing, I customized it. A lot of people put them in the uh, side panels or uh, in the doors and stuff. I again um, uh, put it in the overhead because to me that seemed like a more convenient location. Uh, and again, as an experimental builder, that's what you can do if you choose to.
Another thing is I went with the Xfinity uh, stick, which again, it's a, it's a beautiful device, but you know, it's uh, six different, six or so different uh, buttons that have to all be connected into the whole uh, Garmin system and so forth. Uh, so uh, you asked about uh, how I got to this point. Basically, I've you know, been in, uh, a, an aviation kind of person all my life and uh, went back, got my license, got my IFR, bought a uh, Piper Cherokee and uh, was very happy with that. But after a number of years with that, I uh, wanted something a little bit more robust, a little more um, uh, able to travel farther, faster, uh, get me to the places that I'd like to go. So I started uh, kicking around the idea of uh, a kit plane. Uh, I had a friend down the street who built an RV7. He suggested, well, why don't you build a 10? You know, it's like an update, upgrade from your Piper. And so I started thinking about it, and that's, that's where I'm at from, from all that. Uh, you know, uh, banging uh, rivets into aluminum and doing some uh, fiberglass work is one thing, but uh, the level of sophistication that the avionics has gotten to uh, could make, you know, could be daunting to anybody who isn't, uh, you know, in the profession and stuff like that. Over the years, you know, I had the, the average homeowner kind of experience, uh, you know, some Heath kits and stuff throughout the years, but nothing to the level and complexity of uh, what these systems need for all of the CAN buses and the um, D sub harnesses and so forth that have to be pinned and things. So um, basically, it's, it's like eating an elephant a little bite at a time. I, um, I uh, saw online videos, uh, uh, who and how, and I decided to go with uh, Steinair for a build of the panel because they would do a lot of the um, uh, interconnects between the panel and so forth and uh, would give me uh, the opportunity of um, their expertise in doing this. They also have a lot of online videos how to do things like depending and all these other uh, interconnects that you need to do for, throughout the system. Uh, along with other ones, Midwest Panel Builders is another great place. They have a lot of videos and are, are constantly telling you about G3X systems. So all these guys are very helpful in, in learning that, and, and I, I go back to eating the elephant. When I first got the uh, wiring diagram, um, you know, I showed it to my son-in-laws, and they just were shaking their heads like, you know, you really understand this? And I said, well, not completely yet, but I'm getting there. And a year later, uh, I do. I, I, in fact, what I've done is uh, since I got the system, the uh, Garmin came out with the uh, Garmin Height Advisor, uh, GHI 15, and I decided to add that to the system. So I had to go in and add to the CAN bus and, you know, pin and stuff for those things. So, um, again, you know, over time you just build a confidence level because you're, you know, you're working with all these different systems. So next steps. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, putting the engine on and connecting up all the uh, firewall forward stuff. But uh, it's been a bit frustrating. Um, I don't have an engine yet. I've been uh, just over two years waiting for my uh, Lycoming Thunderbolt. I uh, keep being told it's soon. Uh, but uh, I'm at a point where I had to kind of rearrange how I built the airplane in order to accommodate the fact that I didn't have an engine to do that. I really would like to get the engine hooked up here uh, where I'm building the plane before I bring it to the airport so that I can get all of this uh, firewall stuff taken care of. But, uh, so I'm just hoping to hear from Lycoming uh, in the near future.